Optical illusions are both fun and they help us understand how human visual system works. They also give us hints about how computer vision systems can be hacked and how we can hack the human visual system to build image and video processing algorithms and realistic virtual reality systems. Let's first talk about what some optical illusions are and how they work. We call it an illusion when things appear to be different from how they really are. Take a look at this very famous checker shadow illusion for example. The area labeled as A looks darker than the area labeled as B. However, they are both the identical shade of grey. Grey appears white if it's in shadow and it appears black if it's under bright light. Or look at this Rubik's cube. Take a look at the blue tiles on the left cube and the yellow tiles on the right cube. What colors do you see? Most people see blue and yellow, but they're actually the exact same shade of grey. No tricks in the video. You can pause the video and mask out the cube using a piece of paper if you don't believe. So why does this happen? Your brain assumes the illuminant to infer the true color of an object. A blue shirt looks blue whether it's indoors illuminated by LED lights or outdoors on a sunny day. This is called color constancy or in the case of the checkerboard example, brightness constancy. In the first illusion, your brain assumes that one of these tiles gets less light due to the perceived shadow and concludes that it must be a brighter color. In the second illusion, the image on the left appears to have a yellow illuminant, whereas the one on the right is under blue light. Therefore, the colors are interpreted relative to the type of illuminant. Cameras also mimic this behavior to produce natural looking colors. If you're interested in how it's done, you can check out my earlier video on how cameras process images. This was an example of a color illusion. Now, let's take a look at an example of a motion illusion. You've probably seen this rotating snakes illusion before. The image you're looking at is entirely stationary. Nothing here actually moves, but they appear to be moving when you're not looking. And it doesn't matter if it's on a display or not. If you print it on a paper, it would still appear moving. Some claim that even cats can see this illusion. We don't know for sure why this happens, but it's probably due to some processing delay in our visual system. Different parts of the scene can be processed at different speeds depending on the brightness, contrast and saccadic eye movements. The reason the wheels stop moving when we look at them might be because the part of the image that we look at is processed at a relatively constant speed. The motion at the periphery might be amplified further because of our peripheral vision is more sensitive to movement. It also makes sense from an evolutionary perspective to have a higher motion sensitivity at the periphery so that we can move our gaze quickly if something moves to see it better. Speaking of moving things, let's take a look at this illusion. Stare at the center cross for a while and you'll start seeing a green disc running around. There is no actual green in the video, it's just the missing disc running in a circle. It gets more interesting if you keep looking. If you stare at the center for about another 15 to 20 seconds, then the magenta discs disappear entirely and you see only the green disc, which doesn't really exist. So why does this happen? This illusion is actually a combination of three different illusions. First of all, nothing is really rotating. The apparent motion is a result of our brain filling in the gaps between the frames. If you think about it, nothing you watch on a display has a truly continuous movement. It's a series of discrete frames displayed one after another. Okay, this was probably something you already knew. So where does the green come from? The green disc is an opposite color after image that we see as a result of the retinal adaptation. Finally, if you fixate at the center for long enough, the magenta discs disappear because it seems that our brain does some sort of background subtraction. If you look at a point for a while, the non-moving parts in the background start disappearing. This phenomenon is called Troxler's fading. This is one of the reasons we unconsciously make small, microsaccadic eye movements. Those movements are believed to prevent the retinal image from fading. Up next, we have the silencing illusion. When objects move, we start ignoring other types of changes. For example, now we see that the colors of the discs are constantly changing. Now look at the center of the circle. Once the discs start moving, we barely see any color change. Size and shape changes disappear as well. This illusion shows how motion affects the appearance of objects. It's very interesting that simply moving an object can silence awareness of visual change. This phenomenon can be factored in video quality assessment algorithms to make more perceptually accurate quality judgments. 
there are many other types of illusions that we don't even realize that are illusions. Illusory contours can be an example of that. For example, there are no triangles in this image. Our visual system is evolved to perceive the world under normal conditions. For example, everyday objects we see have continuous borders. If some portions of the edges are missing or have some occlusion, then our brain just fills them in. Look at these two rectangles, for example. Why do we even see two rectangles here, but not three? Because we see objects as a whole rather than in parts. We assume that those two parts of the rectangle are connected. This phenomenon is linked to the laws of closure and continuity in Gestalt psychology. Here is another very famous illusion. Take a look at this grid, but don't stare at a single point. Do you see the flickering gray dots? What our eyes do here is actually very similar to what edge detection and image sharpening algorithms do. The perceived brightness at a point depends not only on the absolute brightness at that point, but also on its surroundings. The surrounding neurons reduce the activity of the ones at the center, and this is called lateral inhibition. In digital image processing, we use very similar filters that subtract surrounding pixel values from the center ones. We can easily simulate this illusion by applying a Laplacian of Gaussian, or difference of Gaussian's filter, to this grid. In image and video processing, this type of filter is used to process and enhance images to solve a variety of problems. Humans are not the only ones who see optical illusions. Animals see some of them. Even machines can be fooled by using images called adversarial patches. Those adversarial patches cause image classifiers and object detectors to ignore or misclassify what they see in the input. Lastly, I want to share a very interesting illusion that I recently ran into. Keep your eyes on the cross. As we cycle through these faces, they start to look like creepy caricatures. This phenomenon is called the flashed face distortion effect. It was discovered by chance and is speculated to be linked to the perceptual adaptation that helps us recognize faces. Alright, that's all for today. I hope you liked it. Subscribe for more videos and as always, Thanks for watching, stay safe, and see you next time. Ba 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 ba